Truly all praise and thanks belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we seek refuge in Allah from the sins that we commit and the faults that we find within ourselves. For whoever Allah guides is truly guided and whoever he leads astray has no one to guide him or to help him. And we bear witness that there is no object nor deity worthy of worship except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger and prophet. Allah sent him that is the Prophet sallallahu wa sallam with the guidance in a true way of life that will prevail over all other ways of life and sufficient is Allah as a witness. <clears throat> My dear brothers and sisters, I was 10 years old and I couldn't sleep the whole night. 
This wasn't a sleeplessness that came out of sickness or sadness. It was an anxiousness. You see, a couple weeks before, my parents had taken me to the store. And they took me to the, the gift aisle, I think it was Target, and they said, get, get whatever you want. And at that time, the Power Rangers were really po popular. So I remember buying the White Ranger Tiger Zord, and my brother bought the Megazord. And the reason why I couldn't sleep that night, my dear brothers and sisters, was out of excitement for the day of Eid. And actually, I have a confession to make. I didn't wait until Eid morning to open those gifts. I did actually open them uh, and played with them early in the morning. So as we come upon this wonderful and blessed day of Eid, it's a time for us to wonder and ask ourselves a question. <coughs> I found myself asking this question. You know, as Muslims, why do we celebrate? What is it about us and our faith that causes us for celebration? And this is not a typical topic that you would hear about in a Jum'ah khutbah. It's not your typical hellfire and brimstone and damnation that we hear so typically from, from the Mimbar. Instead, I want us to focus on, in our faith, when is it okay to be happy? And what are the things that make us happy in our faith? I'm reminded by the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains why exactly we would be happy. He says, say, it is in the bounty of Allah, فَضْلِ the bounty of Allah, وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ and by His mercy, فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا It is in that that they should rejoice. هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ It is better from, than all that they accumulate. So there are two components that Allah describes to us. It is His bounties, His fadl, and His mercy, His rahmah. So I searched through the Qur'an in preparation for this khutbah. Where are the places where Allah describes and defines what His fadl is? What is that fadl? And I found three categories of fadl. Number one. The blessings and the bounties that are associated with the dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, min Allah is describing some of the believers and saying that there are a group of them traveling throughout the earth seeking the bounties of Allah. So the bounties of Allah exist in this earth. And they are around us. And those are the blessings and the ni'am and those wonderful things that Allah has blessed us with. In another place, in Surah Al-Jum'ah, Allah subhanahu wa says, فَإِذَا قُضِيَةِ الصَّلَاةُ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ And when the prayer, the Jum'ah prayer is concluded, then disperse and seek the bounty of Allah. So normally, after Jum'ah prayer, we go back to work. And we seek Allah's bounty in our businesses, in our careers, and so on and so forth. And another place, Allah subhanahu wa says, <coughs> but as for the favor of your Lord, then report it. And I want to I focus on this for a moment because the attitude many of us have taken with regards to the blessings that Allah has given us is a little bit off. You know, one time I posted on Facebook something I was very happy about. And a brother wrote to me in a private message. And he said, brother, you really shouldn't post that. I said, why, why not? He said, no, you don't understand. People, they're going to give you hasad. They're going to give you nazar. They're going to be envy and, and jealousy towards you. I said, subhanAllah. Uh, do we live in a world today where I can't share any happiness for the fear that somebody's going to think ill of me? <coughs> it should be the opposite. That when someone shares their happiness and shares something that, that they find joy in, that we feel the joy for it. As Sheikh Yasser so eloquently says, that we should multiply our happiness and divide our sorrows. That's the beauty of the community. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّ Now obviously I'm not saying go around bragging about every good thing that happens to you in your life. But at the same time, we shouldn't be shy to share that with those who are close to us. The next category of bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in the Qur'an is the bounty of guidance to Islam. 
this bounty that Allah has given us, the beautiful gift of Islam, Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, we take it for granted. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Yusuf, when Yusuf salam is in the prison and he's talking to those two prisoners, those young men who came in with them, and he, they asked him, can you explain to us these dreams that we've been having? We, we see you to be a trustworthy and a righteous person. And he says, sure, I'm going to explain it to you. And he goes on and he says, وَاتَّبَعْتُ مِلَّةَ أَبِينَا أَبِي أَبَائِي إِبْرَاهِيمُ وَإِسْحَاقُ وَيَعْقُوبُ مَا كَانَ لَنَا أَن نُشْرِكَ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ ذَلِكَ مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ عَلَيْنَا وَعَلَى النَّاسِ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَشْكُرُونَ And I have followed the religion of my forefathers, Ibrahim, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And it was not for us to associate anything with Allah. So this gift that he's talking about, he says, that is the favor of Allah upon us and upon the people, but most of the people are not grateful. Most of the people don't express the gratitude for this gift. And it has a lot to do with the way that we present Islam, doesn't it? The way that we present Islam to our children, to new Muslims. It's almost like a not-to-do list. You can't do this, you can't do that, there's no this, there's no that, there's no this, and this is, you know... So then it becomes this confining, constricting reality that people automatically reject. So he says, this religion that my forefathers have been upon, this is the bounty of Allah. But most people are not grateful for it. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-A'raf, وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِمْ مِنْ غِلْبِ تَجْلِي مِنْ تَحْتِهِمُ الْأَنْهَارِ وَقَالُوا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي هَدَانَا لِهَذَا وَمَا كُنَّا لِيَهْتَدِيَا لَوْ لَا أَنْ هَدَانَ اللَّهِ And this is the beautiful saying of the people of Jannah when they arrive there. One of the first things that they say, and we should be rehearsing this in this dunya, so that when we get there, we know what to say. Alhamdulillah, all praise and all thanks belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الَّذِي هَدَانَا لِهَذَا The one who guided us to this. And what do they say after that? We would not have found the guidance if not for Allah. And that's the grateful attitude of the believer for this beautiful religion that we have, this religion of Islam. Because ultimately, brothers and sisters, when we follow the religion of Allah and we follow the commandments of Allah in the way that His Prophet taught us, we'll have the ultimate blessing and bounty, and that is in the afterlife. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, at the end of Surah Al-Hadith, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا تَقُوا اللَّهِ وَآمِنُوا بِرَسُولِهِ يُؤْتِكُمْ كِفْلَيْنِ مِنْ رَحْمَتِهِ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ نُورًا تَمْشُونَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ O you who have believed, fear Allah and believe in His Messenger. And He will give you a double portion of His mercy. Remember the mercy that we talked about? The mercy that we should be happy about? He'll give it to you. And make for you a light by which you walk and forgive you. And Allah is forgiving and merciful. And Allah continues and says, لِأَلَّا يَعْلَمَ أَهْلُ الْكِتَابِ أَلَّا يَقْدِرُونَ عَلَى شَيْءٍ مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَأَنَّ الْفَضْلَ بِيَدِ اللَّهِ So that the people of the scripture may know that they are not able to obtain anything from the bounty of Allah and that all of the bounty is in the hands of Allah. يُؤْتِيهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ ذُو الْفَضْلِ الْعَظِمِ He gives that bounty to whomever he wills and Allah is the possessor of a great bounty. This is the, this is the, the common sense conclusion my brothers and sisters, when you see that the bounty comes from Allah, anyway, it's not us. So if I say that Allah has blessed me with this, I'm not saying it has anything to do with me. I have nothing to do with it. I can't take any credit for it. It doesn't mean Allah loves me more than He loves someone else. It's just the fact of the matter. Allah has blessed me with this. And all of those blessings and all of those bounties come from Allah, and we can't take any credit for it. And finally, brothers and sisters, the mercy of Allah. In particular, that phrase, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shares with us and tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ Say, O oh my servants who have transgressed against themselves, لا تَقْنَتُ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Do not despair. From that mercy of Allah, that everlasting mercy of Allah. Why? Inna Allah Allah forgives all of the sins. 
rahim. He, it is he who is the forgiving and the merciful. So, we've seen the two components. There is the blessings and bounties of Allah which we should celebrate, and the mercy of Allah that we should celebrate. But what specifically about these two Eids that our religion has commanded us and Allah has instructed us, what about them is so special that requires us? Brothers and sisters, Muslims, we take a different stance when it comes to celebration. We don't celebrate just for celebration's sake, although that's good. But what's better is the reason why we celebrate. We have two Eids. Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. We celebrate Eid al-Fitr as the commemoration of the completion of one of the pillars of our faith, the fasting of Ramadan. Imagine that. You've just completed one pillar out of five. That's pretty good. Most people pay their zakat al-mal during that month as well. So actually, two pillars, and we're celebrating that. It's in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we celebrate and that we rejoice. And the other Eid, the Eid that's coming up, obviously it is the celebration of the forgiveness of all the hujjaj who are going and attending this pilgrimage, and they're completing that pillar of their faith. That's a huge celebration as well. But what about if you can't go there? What about if Allah didn't invite you, you know, for Hajj this year? Well, we have our own opportunity to get a taste of Allah's forgiveness. <coughs> and that is by fasting on the day of Arafah. The day of Arafah is the ninth of Dhul Hijjah, the day before Eid. And, Allah, and the Prophet ﷺ says that it, it wipes the sins, the minor sins of the past and the coming year. So you get a double whammy. One fast one day, forgiven for last year and next year. So if you fast next year, then you get double forgiveness for that year as well. And this, is a, this day is tremendous. This is the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brags about His servants who are on the plain of Arafah to His angels. And He tells them, look at my servants, look at their dusty, and look, they've come to me begging for the forgiveness. And the hadith says that no other day, no other day does Allah relieve more people from hellfire than on the day of Arafah. It's a beautiful day, and a day that we should rejoice. Brothers and sisters, please come up and, and make, make space for those who are coming in late. In fact, not only do we need to rejoice, but one time there was a Jewish man who came to Umar radiallahu anhu, when he was the, the Khalifa, when he was Amir al-Mu'mineen. He said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, there is a verse in your book that if it came to us, we would have made that a holiday. <laughs> Imagine this, you know, haughty attitude of this man who came to Umar. And so Umar said, which verse are you talking about? And so he said, the verse in Surah Al-Ma'idah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا This day I've perfected for you your religion and completed my favor upon you and approved for you Islam as your way of life. He said, if that would have came in our book, we would have made that a holiday. And so Umar radiallahu anhu obviously would not let that go. And he said, we know exactly what day and what place that verse was revealed. It was revealed on the day of Arafah on a Friday. And the Prophet ﷺ was giving the khutbah. It was when he was in his farewell pilgrimage. That's the significance of this day. We talk about the blessing of Islam. The blessing of this day. That's the day that this verse was revealed. That this religion of ours is perfect. There's nothing that needs to be added or subtracted. It's perfect just the way that it is. And Allah has chosen this as our way of life. What a beloved feeling. That Allah has chosen this for me. And has chosen this for you. And has blessed us with the guidance to this way of life. And so Umar wouldn't let that go, and he said that this is in fact Eid for us. This is in fact a cause for our celebration. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from among those who take advantage 
of this blessed day, this day of Arafah, who fast this day of Arafah, and among those who appreciate the blessings and the bounties of Allah, in particular, the bounty of Islam. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslima kathira We've discussed the blessings of Allah, we've discussed the wonderful day of Arafah Now let's talk about Eid I don't like to make things too theoretical So let's get really practical What are the sunnahs or the practices on the day of Eid? The things that we're supposed to do as believers First of all, I find this very empowering and amazing that it's actually haram for you to fast on Eid you're not supposed to, there are few days where it's actually haram to fast but one of them is the day of Eid now what, what's, the, what's the reasoning behind that? well, if you're fasting you're not able to partake in the celebrations, you're not able to go and make visitation with people and you know, exchange those lovely desserts and, and all of that. So fasting is actually forbidden. In fact, on Eid al-Fitr, we're supposed to break our fast before we go to the prayer, usually with, with dates and things like that. And for Eid al-Adha, usually it's, it's right after the prayer. So the first thing, practices of Muslims on Eid, is don't fast. Probably weren't thinking of doing that anyway. But I have to say, number two, making sure that we hit all of our prayers. And I remember when I was like seven years old, and I wasn't actually praying yet, regularly. Uh, I would miss, you know, the like the Fajr prayer or something. But I remember on Eid, every single time, I would be up super early, usually because of the gifts, but I would make sure to make that prayer. And that's the reminder for me and for you, my brothers and sisters, is, don't get too caught up in the partying and the celebration and all that, that we forget the basic tenets of our faith and that we forget to actually make our prayer. So make sure that you catch the Fajr prayer. Number three, making ghusl. See, everything about Eid is just exciting and fun. Like, you prepare yourself, you prepare your, your body, you clean yourself, take a shower and bathe yourself. I'm sure we do that regularly anyway. But it's part of our in faith and our instruction. Imagine 1,400 years ago, that was the instruction. You may not bathe every day, but on this day, you need to bathe. Also, having nice clothes. This is actually from the sunnahs of Eid, is dressing in your nicest clothes. Now that doesn't mean dressing in your you know, most revealing clothes or whatever, but it means dressing nicely, looking very nice. In fact, one time, Umar radiallahu anhu, he was out in the marketplace, and he saw, you know, he's walking by and he saw a really nice cloak. So he went up and he felt the fabric and he said, this is, this is really nice. I'm going to buy this as a gift for the Prophet ﷺ. And he actually took this cloak, this overgarment, and he took it to the Prophet ﷺ and said, here, I want you to wear this on Eid. So imagine, you know, you're, in, uh, you're at the mall, you know, Urban Spectrum or whatever, and you find a really nice, a really nice suit in Macy's. And you say, hey, Sheikh Yasser, I really want you to wear this, you know, and I, right? That's the, that's the attitude that they have. But he found something very nice, and he said, this is befitting of the Messenger of Allah. This is something that's just really nice. I want him to wear it on Eid. So we need to wear those nice clothes. Also, the takbirat. We know about the takbirat and how we say them before the prayer. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in the verses prescribing fasting upon us شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ So the end of the verse وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ So that you can make takbir, glorify Allah Why? عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ Over what He guided you For what He guided you Which is again, this faith, this beautiful faith of ours وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُمْ And so that you may be thankful So you see these themes flowing together so the takbirat, the actual recitation of Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, that's part of it. And then, another interesting thing about Eid is that it's, it's for everyone. Young and old, men and women, even if a woman is, it's that time of the month, everyone is supposed to be in attendance. 
not necessarily pray, but be in attendance of this festive occasion. Because we want everyone to be happy. We want everyone to be together. We want everyone to praise Allah together. And in the Eid Salah itself, you know, when we actually get up and we, we do the prayer, have you noticed that we say more takbirat in that prayer than any other prayer? Seven times and five times. And that's fulfilling the, the, the verse. What did you This blessing, again, glorifying Allah. Of course, we know about the khutbah, which many people leave early because they're just so excited to go and you know, eat breakfast and greet and visit people. But I would say just, you know, hold on for a second. Listen to the khutbah. Usually it's not that long anyway. Inshallah, you'll take one good thing out of it, if anything. So stick around for that. Next, the Prophet ﷺ, after the prayer, he would actually take different routes. So imagine if he was coming, uh, you know, he was coming for prayer, he would take the five coming to, you know, the masjid and get off on Alicia. And then he would go and he'd take like the 405 on the other way. You know, take a different route. And why would the Prophet ﷺ do that and make a point to do that and make it a point that this was transmitted to us? There are a couple of reasons. First, to spread the greetings. This is a festive and happy day. And saying hi and, and salam to as many people as he possibly could. And so that everyone he saw could receive those blessings. You know, through the salams and the, and the prayers. You know, when we go around and we say, Taqabbalullah, may Allah accept you know, your prayers and your fasting and, and all of that. <coughs> also to fulfill the, the needs of those who are less fortunate. He would go and find those people who are less fortunate and, and seek them out and actually help them. And finally, <coughs> to display the takbir, you know, to show everyone and, and to be, you know, spread that sense of happiness. Now, I want to I shift gears here in conclusion, my brothers and sisters, because living here in this country as a, as a young Muslim who grew up here, born and raised, I think I have some advice for our families. On Eid. You know, when I was preparing for this khutbah, I said, you know, I'm sure that the internet has some really good stuff about Eid and, you know, tips for Eid. So I did some searches, and everything that I found was, you know, it was all negative. Okay? What's haram? Don't mix, you know, genders and this and that. Like, this is haram and that's haram and that's haram. And so I, like, tried different search terms, and then I found only, like, beauty tips and advice and uh, food cooking advice for Eid. He says, SubhanAllah, we don't have any good advice for Eid. So here's my advice. Brothers and sisters, as we come into the holiday season, with Thanksgiving and Christmas around the corner, this is the time where our kids are going to be looking for what is, what is the Muslim way. Right? We tell them, no, Habibi, you can't, no, you, you know, we can't do the Christmas tree, we can't do the, you know, all that stuff. Well, then what can we do? And so this is the time for us to create our own culture, our own American Muslim culture, where we celebrate our faith in our own way. And I want to differentiate a second between culture and, and what's commonly, you know, people just say, oh, this is bid'ah. People use that term so loosely. You know, it's okay for us to have a culture. Islam isn't against culture. Islam is a framework. Culture can fit into that framework. Anything from culture that doesn't agree with Islam, we get rid of it. But everything else is fine. Right? So if your culture says, you know, on Eid, we decorate and we put lanterns and all that, more power to you. But as long as you don't think that that is part of the religion, and that that is part of the Eid celebration, that you have to do that, or that it's some way associated with the religion, that's when it becomes a bid'ah. So what I recommend, brothers and sisters, is to develop a family tradition. So that there is that flow and that, and that expectation of what exactly is going to happen on Eid. The first advice I'll give is take the day off. Please, I'm begging you. Your children are begging you. Take the day off. If you can. I know many people, maybe financially, economically speaking, that's not possible. But if you can, then do it. Because this is the day, this is our special day. And we only get two of them in a year. So take the day off. Number two, build 
build Dra'id hype. There needs to be this sense of anticipation and excitement around Eid. Just like, you know, there's Christmas songs and movies and all this stuff, and, you know, kids, they feel just excited during Christmas time. Because there's just so much built up, build up and just anticipation of it. Well, we should do the same thing. And if that means, you know, buying nice gifts for our kids, you know, within reason, go for it. I know that's something, to this day, I still remember as one of my most powerful memories of Eid. And those are the things, by the way, those, those emotional imprints that get left on us, we take them with us through the rest of our lives. Number two also, clothing. Letting your children, or having them being involved in the process of selecting their own clothing that they're going to be wearing. Helping them pick out something nice for Eid. My wife tells me that this is her fondest memory. So I guess for the boys it's, you know, toys. And for the girls it's clothes. But that's, that's her powerful memory. And she, even to this day, no, we have to get the Eid outfit. And, you know, for her niece and, you know, all of that. Also, the takbirat. You know, Eid morning can be kind of a hectic, you know, everybody's trying to dress up and dress their nicest and put on their perfume and all that. That's the chance for everyone to get in the car and start making those takbirat on the way to Eid. I remember I used to look forward to that so much, and my dad would let me lead those, you know, in the car. And if there was ever any quarreling, hey, why are you late? Allah, Akbar, Allah, Akbar, it would stop. Isn't that beautiful? That's a part of our faith, subhanAllah. The next thing is planning out the day, planning it out. Many times, you know, if we're lucky enough to get our family to take the day off Eid or to, to be able to celebrate with them, we don't know what to do. We go to the Eid prayer and then, all right, everybody go home. What kind of Eid is that? There needs to be a plan. There needs to be fun stuff. And not just fun for the kids where the parents are, you know, sitting around and drinking tea. Or maybe that's fun, I don't know. But we're talking something that's fun for the whole family and that can get the whole family engaged together. Whatever that activity is. So what I recommend is for the kids and the parents <coughs> to work together and to plan some fun activity on Eid together. For me and my family, one of the things that I always used to look forward to, and I still do to this day, is Eid morning breakfast. We would always go out to a restaurant, get the whole family together, and go and have breakfast. <coughs> Maybe breakfast isn't your thing, you want to do brunch, you want to do lunch, whatever. But make it a family tradition. Then it becomes something that people can really cling on to. And it becomes part of our, our culture and part of our celebration. Visiting family and friends, you know, that's something you can do to plan out the day. And just make sure that there isn't that, that <coughs> lull, you know, that comes at the end of, or the middle of the day. Okay, you've gone to breakfast, now what? Okay, everybody goes home and takes a nap because they just had like a huge breakfast, and then the day is done. Okay, try to plan a little bit better than that. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Bani Adam, khudu zinatukum inda kulli masjid, wa kulu wa shrabu wa la tusrifu, inna wa la yuhabu al-musrifin. Old children of Adam, take your adornment at every masjid and eat and drink, but don't be excessive. <coughs> don't overdo it. And lastly, brothers and sisters, when it comes to Eid, Allah has designed this faith of ours for both of our celebrations for us to remember those who are less fortunate than us. And this was the practice of the Prophet ﷺ as he would go along his different routes. And as Allah commands us to give in Eid al-Fitr, Zakat al-Fitr, or Fitr. You pay $10 or whatever it is for every person in your family. Why? So that you can feed someone. That's why they say pay it early. So they can actually go have time to get the food. You know, whoever is doing the service, those organizations that do it for us, go get food and feed somebody on Eid. So that we have people who are actually able to enjoy the Eid. What about Eid al-Adha? Well, if you're going and making your sacrifice, it's recommended that you donate some, some of that meat uh, in charity. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاللَّهُ فَضَّلَ بَعْضَكُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ فِي الرِّزْقِ Allah, Allah has favored some of you over others in provision, but those who were favored would not hand over their provision to those whom their right hands possesses, so that they would not be equal to them in their sustenance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَبِنَعْمَةِ اللَّهِ يَجَحْتُونَ don't, be, don't reject the blessing of Allah. Allah has given us many blessings. 
We're in different levels and different positions, all of us, but all of us are fortunate. We don't have bombs dropping on our heads. We, we don't live in Syria where, you know, there's absolute chaos. We don't have, you know, we're not living in Burma where the, there's a genocide. Alhamdulillah, we have safety. We have blessing. Let's share that with our brothers and sisters and share that and make that a practice and make that a tradition in our families that we can do every Eid, inshallah, so that our kids will love this faith and so that our kids will engage with it. We have a couple of announcements, inshallah. First of all, the Pillars Academy bake sale is today. Now I got a chance before the football to actually go outside and see and they have done some fantastic work. Some of it's already sold out, so you're already too late. But after the khutbah, inshallah, make sure that you go. They've made cookies that look like lambs. I mean, it's really fancy stuff, really professionally done. I highly recommend uh, that you do that, inshallah. And then also there is the, of course, Eid Salah, inshallah. That would be on Tuesday, as we all know. There will be two prayers, one at 7.30 and the second one at 9 a.m. And takbirat will start one half hour in advance. So takbirat start at 9 and at 8.30, inshallah. So make sure if you're joining us here that you're on time. Usually parking is difficult, so make accommodations, inshallah. And the Eid Carnival, OCIF Eid Carnival, is going to be on Sunday, October 20th from 11 to 4. And tickets are available outside. We have, they're $15 per person. And also, we're looking for volunteers to help out. So if you'd like to share that celebration and that sense of celebration, please help out, inshallah. And finally... Two more things. Open Mosque Day will be Sunday, October 27th from 11 to 3. Invite your non-Muslim colleagues and friends and neighbors. And if you're interested in volunteering, please let the office know. And the youth group tonight is at 7 o'clock. Finally, please make dua for Sayyid Jamaluddin Ali Khan, who passed away in India this week. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on his soul and give his family patience. And please make dua for Sister Maham Hamid, Aqila, and Salim Jafar, and Layla Waziri for a speedy recovery. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب رب اغفر لنا ولوالدينا وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك يا ربنا سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر الله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن